I'm glad you came in here today for our appointment. You mentioned that you wanted to work on your insecurities. Well, this means today we will focus on encryption. Hi, my name is Nick. I'm your digital psychologist. In my office, we will work through your confusion, fears and insecurities regarding the digital world and IT equipment. I understand that in rapidly changing world of technology, it can be challenging to catch up. Moreover, sit down and take your time. That is why it is important to have someone to address the difficult feelings related to this. This is what will help you confidently deal with most issues connected to technology and digital world. If you have questions you think we need to discuss, please comment below or text us in our social media. All links are in the description. It seems like everyone is using encryption these days. So you just follow along? Do you choose services or devices because the provider mentioned that they encrypt your data? Why? Will it make you more secure? Sorry, the truth is, it's not guaranteed. In mass understanding, encryption has become a synonym for security. In reality, it is a bit more complicated. Some manufacturers and providers use this to their advance. What is private and secure transformed in the last few years? Standard cloud encryption is not enough for a lot of use cases today. To make sure your data is securely encrypted, we will dive deeper into how encryption works, what kinds of encryption exist, and how to use this knowledge to make the best decisions. When information or a data is shared over the internet, it goes through a series of network devices worldwide which form part of the public internet. So what is encryption exactly? Encryption is the conversion of data from readable format into encoded format, so that it appears random. Encryption requires to use a cryptographic key, a set of mathematical values that both the sender and the recipient agree on. Although encrypted data appears random, encryption proceeds in a logical, predictable way. This allows the recipient that has the right key to decrypt the data. Turning it back into plain text. Truly secure encryption will use keys complex enough that a third party cannot decrypt or break the sidecar text by brute force. In other words, by guessing the key. Encryption is the basic building block of data security. It is the most important and the most simplest way to protect computer data. Data exists in three states, and so does the encryption applied to this data. To understand how to use encryption properly, we need to be familiar with these three states. Each state of data needs a unique type of encryption, and there are multiple approaches to the process. When some data is in a USB stick or a hard drive or cloud storage, then data is at rest. Leaving that, unencrypted data means that whoever gets access to the data storage automatically gets access to the data as well. However, encrypting that data is a problem that has been solved for many years now. Think password-protected USB sticks or encrypted cloud storage. This is encryption at rest, and now it is highly recommended step for any data stored in the cloud. Even if someone gets access to the storage, they will not be able to see the data there without the proper keys. Data at rest is usually protected by a firewall or antivirus software. Though these methods of protection for data at rest are good, 
complete safety requires adding a layer of defense. This is where encryption address comes to play. For example, you saved a copy of a paid invoice on your server with a customer credit card information. Let's be honest, you don't want that to fall into the wrong hands. By encrypting data at rest, you are turning your customer sensitive data into another form of data. This usually happens through an algorithm that can be understood by a user who does not have an encryption key to decode it. On the authorized personnel, will have access to these files, thus ensuring that your data stays secure. When the data is moving from one place to the other, then we consider the data to be in transit. When data in transit is not encrypted, it gives a chance for third parties to snatch the data while it's being sent from one place to the other. In the other words, if your data is being sent around, not having encryption in transit leaves the data unsafe even if your storage is encrypted. Encrypting that data is more recent achievement, but it is considered the internet standard today. This added security layer helps to protect data when uploading or downloading a document. It also can be used to protect your businesses when you send an email or when sending data packets using voice over internet protocol calling solutions. But there is the third state, when some computation is performed on data from simply reading a file to machine learning and AI. At that point, the data is considered in use. When data is in use, it means that the file is being played coded or viewed. Anytime a program is being updated, erased, viewed or generated, it is considered in use. This is a difficult stage for encryption because it can crash or damage the data. Still, it is important to protect the information in this state. If not, it creates a huge risk for data breaches. Now that we have a deeper understanding of how data encryption works, the real question is, how do we use this? With all this knowledge, here are some practices that can help you to ensure your data is secured effectively. First step, build a data security strategy. Your security approach should take into account your organization size. For instance, organizations with lots of users should use cloud servers to store their encrypted data. Alternatively, small organizations can keep their media on workstations. An additional point to consider is the speed of your encryption. You don't want to wait hours for your data to be encrypted, especially if you need to transfer it over the network urgently. Ask your vendor how fast they can encrypt the file, but make sure security is not compromised. Second step, choose the right encryption approach for your data. When deciding which data you should encrypt, you must think about the worst outcome. How much damage would take place if data is exposed? If the risk is unacceptable, then you have to encrypt that data. Sensitive details should be encrypted at all costs names, credit card information, social security numbers. You must also ensure that files you are accessing remotely or transferring over a network are encrypted. Third step, control all access to your data. Give access to encryption keys only to those that need this specific data. For instance, your financial data must only be accessible to your finance department. Furthermore, decide what these users may access from the files. For instance, your marketing group may access your customer's email but must not be allowed to see their credit card information. You can achieve this by encrypting every column in a file of its own or altering your vault access policies. Fourth step, encrypt data in transit. Storage and data collection are core parts of every organization. Data in your system is simpler to protect than files that are in transit. While data is being transferred to various locations, 
we recommend using a VPN to mask your IP address. Final step, build a data backup strategy. If data is lost, you must be able to recover the keys to encrypt the information. Store your decryption keys in a secure location and keep a backup of all files. Keep your decryption code separate from your backup keys. Now that we have gone through what encryption means and how you can use it for the security of your organization, there is still one important question remaining. For all of us, humans with home networks, that is the security of your Wi-Fi. Why does your Wi-Fi network need to be secured? You might ask. Your Wi-Fi network is your home's wireless internet connection. It involves a wireless router that sends a signal through the air. Your home network has a range of wireless devices on them, from computers and phones to AP cameras, voice assistants and smart TVs. Taking some basic steps to secure your home Wi-Fi network will help protect your devices from getting hacked and your information from getting stolen. Others nearby who connect to your unprotected network might be able to see what you are doing online, including your personal information. Back to the theme of this video, you can encrypt your network. That makes it harder for other people to see what you are doing or to get your personal information. You can encrypt your network by updating your router settings to either WPA3 personal or WPA2 personal. WPA3 is the newest encryption available, but both will work to keep your privacy. As for the Getix store, many of our routers support these kinds of encryption. Without getting into too much detail, we are inviting you to see the specifications for the products on our website. However, if you have an older router that does not support WPA3 or WPA2, this needs to be solved. Older routers have WPA and WEP, which are outdated and not secure. If those are the only options listed, try updating your router software. Then check again to see if WPA2 or WPA3 are available. If they are not, consider getting a new router to keep your information secure. Lastly, keep your router up to date. Before you set up a new router, visit the manufacturer's website to see if there is a new version of the software available for a download. To make sure you know about the latest version, register your router with the manufacturer and sign up to get updates. Before we finish our session, let us follow up with a brief Q&A from our followers. You ask me a simple question connected to cybersecurity, and we chose the ones that are universal and relevant to all viewers. After watching this video, you can leave your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to have them all answered in the following videos. Without further ado, Let's go to the issues. What are the most common scams I should stay away from? Phishing scams are a constant threat. Using social engineering ploys, cyber criminals will attempt to trick you into giving personal information such as your login ID, password and banking or credit card information. Phishing scams can be carried out by phone, text, or through social network sites, but most commonly by emails. Be suspicious for any official-looking emails, message or phone calls that ask for personal or financial information. Second question. I know passwords are very important for cybersecurity, but there are just no way to keep them secure and remember them all. I understand. We all have too many passwords to manage and it's easy to take shortcuts, like reusing the same password. A password manager can help you to maintain strong, unique passwords for all your accounts. These programs can generate strong passwords for you and remind you to update your password periodically. Third, 
is backup that important? Back up regularly. If you are a victim of a security incident, the only guaranteed way to repair your computer is to erase and reinstall the system. Fourth, how do we consistently expose our devices to threats? Devices can be hacked via Bluetooth and subsequently your private information can be stolen. If there is no reason to have your Bluetooth on, turn it off. Fifth, why is it said that public networks are not secure? When you connect to a public network, you are sharing the network with everyone who is also connected. Any information you send or retrieve on the network is vulnerable. Stay away from public networks or use a VPN when you are connected to one. This was all for today's session. My name is Nick and I'm your digital psychologist. Together, we will work for your confusion, fears and insecurities. I hope this session solved most of your questions regarding encryption and cybersecurity. If there is anything else that remains unclear, don't hesitate to leave your questions in the comments. Also, like this video and subscribe to our page so that you don't miss our next appointment as well as much more educational and fun materials from our team. Stay tuned and make it easier. See you soon.